Check this shit out. And we're back. This is part two of my look at the 11 best run and gun co op games for the NES. Yes, technically there were only 11 two player run and gun games on the system, but come on, just let me have this one. I'm joined again this week by my buddy Ashley, who is the bub to my bob in playing all these titles. Last time we played through games 11 through 6, which were a bit underwhelming to say the least. I also go over the general description of the run and gun genre and give you some background on Ashley's impressive artistic talents, so if you haven't seen it already, check out part 1 which I've linked to in the description. From here on out, it's all straight up classics, so let's get into the good stuff, beginning with... Number five, Heavy Barrel. The winner for best title on this list easily goes to Heavy Barrel. Heavy Barrel is an overhead shooter akin to some of the Super C levels we'll be discussing shortly. The controls are great, the difficulty is reasonably forgiving, and the graphics, music, and sound are all top notch. The main feature of Heavy Barrel is both the best and worst thing about the game, the weapons upgrading. Certain enemies drop keys and spread out amongst the level are these boxes that can be unlocked. While the keys are pretty sparse, the locked chests are fucking everywhere. Seriously, the screen is littered with them. So without knowing what boxes yield what, you're inevitably going to use your only key on a chest that gives you, what the hell did that do? It's like playing press your luck, praying for no whammies. If there was a manifestation to explain what the fear of missing out feels like, it's a level of heavy barrel. When you do finally get a weapon, holy shit. They're like all the standard contra guns on steroids. Of all the flamethrowers that we used in these games, this one gets the palm to scorch. Heavy Barrel does have the cardinal sin of two player games, which is when one player dies, they're totally dead and can't share a life like in games like Bubble Bobble or Ninja Turtles 3. There's just nothing fun about losing your last man and then having to watch your friend play solo for another 10 minutes like I did here. I mean, I wanted Ashley to get as far as he could, but secretly, I was hoping he would just explode repeatedly so that I could jump back in and have something to do. Those are the kind of thoughts the designers put into my head. I blame them. Yeah, this is a really beautiful game. If I didn't know that it was Data East, I would just automatically assume that it was by Konami, because there's such an elegance and sophistication about the graphics. This game is really fun, but flawed. The gameplay and level designs are excellent, and if they'd only tweak the keys thing, this could be a top tier game. Like if you didn't know what was in a chest, but you knew blue ones were a mystery weapon and red ones were a mystery shield or health upgrade or something, you could at least choose whether you want to use your precious key or not. I'm just handing out million dollar ideas in the critiques y'all. Feel free to slightly improve these 25 year old games and rake in the cash with my blessing. Let's move on to our fourth best run and gun. Number four, Jackal. While not exactly a run and gun since you drive a car the whole time, Jackal is for sure in the same format. Basically, you maneuver your jeeps around various maps, blasting everyone and everything in sight, but also taking time to rescue your fellow army buddies who have been taken hostage. I'm not really sure what you gain by helping these guys, other than points and a sense of self-satisfaction, but something about the way they rush out of the rubble of these buildings makes me really want to do my part and save them. I don't know how to explain this in terms of programming, but whatever decisions Konami made to convince me to be a hero worked. You can only shoot up for some reason, but you can lob grenades in any direction, and since you have unlimited ammo, this will be your primary attack. A lot of the games on this list implement grenades as a secondary attack, but Jackal got it right the most, and judging your distances is way more forgiving here. You can also run people over, which is as useful as it is satisfying. Each level has a different look, new enemies, surprising hazards, and a unique boss to battle at the end. The visuals and the music in this game remind me of the overhead levels in the first Ninja Turtles game for the Nintendo, which was made around the same time. There's a lot to be said for how tiny the sprites are on the screen, and I don't mean that as a negative. Because of their Micro Machine stature, the gameplay area can be much larger and thus gives you more room to maneuver. This is especially great when playing two-player because if the screen area were smaller or the sprites were bigger, you'd constantly be waiting for the two tanks to be close enough to keep moving the screen in the direction you need to go. Also, unlike, say, Contra Force, there's no sprite flickering or slowdown, just smooth, constant action. Jekyll has probably the most cryptic storyline of any of these games. Only the, this battle will make your blood boil warning from the beginning, and these odd mid-stage cutscenes where you and the homies all look at a map and one of the guys says, here? 
Not that we're playing any of these running guns for the story, but come on, they could have put slightly more effort into the narrative. I guess that's like the one place they had to cut their budget. Like the other Konami running guns on this list, Jackal starts off reasonably forgiving, but by the fourth level or so, shit starts to get real. But overall, Jackal is kind of amazing. The music is classic Konami, the design is top notch, the gameplay is solid, difficult but not impossible. It's extremely fun, especially in co-op mode, and it says a lot that there are actually three better running guns ahead of it, including number three, Super C. I think growing up, we always referred to this as Super Contra or Contra 2. I don't think I heard anyone call it Super C, but I may be alone there. It's kind of a weird title, especially considering how popular Contra was at the time. Why not include Contra in the title? I guess you'll have to ask the wizards at Konami that question. So what's different here from the original? Well, there's some updated graphics, some reworked weapons, and instead of those rad hallway scenes from the first game, here you get these heavy barrel style variety levels. Speaking of weapons, it's time for another flamethrower update. The flamethrower in Super C is badass and takes the second place prize for most useful burninating of your enemies. Like Contra before it, Super C is notoriously difficult with one hit deaths that come with constant regularity. You can use the Konami code here, but Super C only gives you 10 lives instead of 30, and that makes a huge difference. Oh yes, this is the level where the champagne bubbles kill us. And honestly, that's probably the only thing that holds it back from being better than Contra. Everything else is a big improvement in every way, but the 30 lives code in the original just makes it more accessible and fun. The ramp is an extra layer of spatial sophistication that's just very surprising for a game made this early on in the lifespan of the Nintendo. Of all the titles on this list, the two main Contra games probably had the biggest following, and as such, there's undoubtedly tons of cool dudes who can beat this blindfolded with no codes, but we made it a few levels in before using up all our lives and continues, and that was it. Not that we're complaining, Super C is one of the most beautiful games on the system, with some really elegant backgrounds and some super inspired sprite designs, especially with the bosses. Compare this to Ikari Warriors and you can see the level of sophistication that Konami already had in terms of designing graphics for their games. There's really no need to say that Konami games have great sound, music, graphics, gameplay, etc. But Super C is one of their best titles, and as such, it excels greatly in all departments. Just not quite as much as... Number 2, Guerrilla War. There's a lot to say about Guerrilla War. The most obvious of which is, yep, you play as Fidel Castro and Che Guevara during the Cuban Revolution. I thought Hitler showing up in Bionic Commando was bold, but I gotta say, it takes a lot to make a game where your heroes are these two. Anyway, Guerrilla War places you and your buddy on this familiar looking island where you make your way from outpost to outpost. I always assumed you were the gorillas in this war, but the enemies in this game often appear quickly by emerging from bushes next to you and even behind you. So maybe they're the ones doing the gorillaing. It's kind of impressive how sophisticated the AI is here, as they approach and attack in some really unique and surprising ways. The graphics of these explosions would make really interesting paintings if made very large, kind of like the paintings of explosions that Roy Lichtenstein did back in the 60s. Also, holy shit, Guerrilla War is brutal! I didn't really notice it at first till Ashley pointed out, but if you slow down the death animation, just look at how gory this is. Jesus Christ! There's all kinds of subtle touches thrown in here and there, like these signs or the clothes hanging on the wire. Like, check out when this pig crosses a screen and drags my character along with it. That's not a glitch. That's something that was supposed to happen. Awesome! Guerrilla War is tough at first, until you realize it has the same infinite continue code as Akari Warriors. Now you can play forever if you want. Oddly enough, Akari is the game that's closest in style and in gameplay, only in Guerrilla War it's done 10,000 times better. The takes, for instance, can take multiple hits and upgrade weapons, and when they're low on health, the beeping warning sign gives you a chance to get out of them before they explode. Seriously, it's like SNK went back and said, whew, we really fucked up with Akari. Let's improve every single aspect and just give it a new name. It's basically the retro equivalent of the director's cut. Unlike the caravan, liberate, and transport style of Jackal, the hostages in Guerrilla War are just posted up in plain sight. Unfortunately, they're always in the way, and I'm constantly martyring them on accident. After a while, you'll realize that points are meaningless, and these dudes had it coming by getting caught in the first place. No mercy, no remorse. I would now like to hand out the Palm to War for the best palm tree in a run and gun game. Honorary mention to Jackal for the swaying palms. Third place to Contra. 
I was going to give it to Gorilla War for these palms, but Super C is the winner. They're like pixel origami. Gorilla War is insanely fun. Just constant carnage at all times. The music is great, the gameplay is varied for what it is, and the graphics are really impressive. Also, another flamethrower. This one is pretty damn satisfying, probably third place behind Super C and Heavy Barrel. If you haven't played Gorilla War, it's a must play on the NES, second only to the godfather of the run and gun. Number one, Contra. First of all, it's Contra. If not for the idea behind this video, I never plan to talk about it on this channel. It's the furthest thing from obscure, and it absolutely deserves all the praise its nostalgia-filled fans throw on it. The music is iconic, the levels are burned into our collective consciousnesses, the spread gun is and always will be the ultimate weapon, and it's arguably one of the greatest games ever made, certainly top 10 for the NES. The Konami Code began with Gradius, but Contra was the game that made it famous and made it fun, opening up a very difficult title to pretty much any Nintendo lover who had to let his little brother join in. The controls are so fluid, you just feel like you're in total control shooting in every direction and flip jumping majestically from platform to platform. There's so much to say about the quality of the graphics, especially when talking about some of these incredible bosses. Like this machine that comes to life. You see those blinking lights? That's how you know it's a computer. I mean, just look at this HR Geiger knockoff. Somehow he's even more terrifying after you kill him and he just leaves this gaping destruction behind. But it's not just the big set pieces, just as much can be seen in the subtle background details as well. I love the rocks in the very first screen. It's amazing how they're able to create form with such simple means. Even these little stars blinking in the background. They didn't have to program that, and every other game wouldn't have bothered. I just realized that maybe they put that in the game because this is about aliens. Each level has a distinct challenge from these claw game arms, to this vertical platforming, to just this guy with a gun who somehow kills me every damn time. The behind the back perspective levels are especially engaging, where you're trying to navigate this pseudo 3D environment while dodging bullets and shooting targets. I never really understood why the electricity is here at all though. It doesn't hurt you, and it doesn't prevent you from moving forward. It does look and sound cool when you hit it, so at least it's got that going for it. With the 30 lives code, Contra is definitely doable, even beatable if you're teaming up with someone who owned it growing up. However, the difficulty really ramps up in this level with the flamethrowers. Holy shit. These things are the real deal, and even when you think you've timed your approach perfectly, you're probably still getting scorched. Speaking of scorched, Contra's flamethrower gets the lowest rank of all the games on this list. It's a real stinker. Instead of just roasting whoever's in front of you, it instead shoots this looping fire circle that moves so slow compared to just your normal rifle. Check out this section where I shot it in such a way that it completely went around this dude without killing him. Boo! And that's it. All the running guns for the NES ranked. Unlike the beat-em-ups video where I recommended all seven of those games, I honestly don't think anyone should play either X-Men or the original Akari Warriors. They're both an assault on the eyes and ears. Akari 2, Contra Force, and the Gauntlets are all a mixed bag, but there's definitely enough interesting factors there to make each of them worth trying at least once. The top five games we discussed, fuck yes. Grab a friend and play them all immediately, even if you played them all ad nauseum. These are some of the best two player titles on the NES and are the epitome of fun times in 8-bits. Thanks again to my buddy Ashley for not only sticking it out for three weeks, but also for adding lots of humor and insight into this video. His artwork and swag is really, really good, and he's constantly creating new work, so check him out on the interwebs. Goodbye, Ashley. There's still way more two-player games and genres to cover. I've really only scratched the surface, and I'm honestly surprised that there are as many titles that fit the description as there are. Hell, even in making this video, we found 4 or 5 games that didn't quite qualify as running guns, and as such I'll have to incorporate them into another video. That being said, if anyone out there knows some running guns that we didn't include and somehow missed, please let me know. I really am trying to be thorough here. Anyway, stay tuned, there's plenty of great co-op games yet to come. Until next time, 